When I was young, like many kids, I wanted to be a superhero. I don't think I've grown up too much because there's just something about a cape that just, I love it. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a superhero. Which Superman, I'm sorry, which superhero did I want to be? Superman, right? I wanted to be Superman growing up. And all the time, I would go around as Superman. My mom and dad got me Superman pajamas and, of course, a Superman cape. And it didn't matter if it was two in the afternoon. There I was with my Superman pajamas and my Superman cape running around. And most of you know I have a twin brother. And I called him this week because I was like, Danny, you remember when we were superheroes? Danny, which superhero were you? And he's like, I don't want to tell you. And I'm like, why? I said, I can't remember. What was it? He goes, I was Aquaman. And I said, but we didn't live near water. He said, that's why I have a low self-esteem. I had a limited imagination that I was a water superhero, not even near water. But there we were, Superman and Aquaman. Now, my mom would not let us play superheroes in the house that often because we would torture the cat to put it in a position that we had to save the cat, let alone we tore up the house. So she always said, go to the woods. And then that's where we would save the woods people. So one day, I'll never forget, I'll never forget this day, and I have a scar to prove it. You know where this is going, right? So what happened was, is we were going to the woods. And so I was flying to the woods while my brother, Aquaman, was swimming through the grass. And we made it to the woods, and I had this perfect plan. I was going to fly up to this branch, and then swoop down to save the woods people. So while my brother Danny was looking for water, there I am, and I fly up and I grab the branch. But guess what happened? The branch broke. Superman came crashing down, and I did not know what my kryptonite was. It was a three-inch piece of my favorite branch that went into my arm of steel. And there I am in my Superman pajamas laying there crying like a baby. And I learned a valuable lesson. A valuable lesson. We are not meant to be superheroes. Kids are obsessed with it. Movies, multi-billion dollar movies. All this about being a superhero. What is a superhero? A superhero is defined as this. As someone who saves the day, who saves people with extraordinary superhuman powers. That's a superhero. Fictional superheroes all over. You can just look at them everywhere, whether it's Captain America, Flash, Superman, whoever. But these are fictional. They're not real. And we were never meant to be superheroes. The truth is, there is actually one who meets that criteria. There is one who meets the criteria as a superhero, one who saves the world with extraordinary superhuman powers. We've been looking at a healthy church. And I'm here to tell you today, a healthy church is one in which Jesus alone wears the cape is the superhero. That is a healthy church. And as we've looked at a healthy church, we've looked at Jesus. Okay, there's a picture. There, there's my brother. And I know we don't, we don't look like twins. It is true. He looks more like bear man with that big beard. And, and there I am as Superman. And you could just imagine us wreaking havoc on the woods as we were growing up. But the truth is, again, we are not superheroes. There is one alone, and it is Jesus. Let's look at Colossians 1, 15 through 20. As we've been looking at Colossians 1, 15 through 20, we've seen Jesus as God. We've seen Jesus as the forerunner, the sustainer. We've seen Jesus as the glue that holds us all together. We've also seen Jesus as the head of the church, and today we're going to see Jesus as the hero of the church. So we're going to be looking at, to start, just a recap of all these verses, Colossians 1, 15 through 20, where we see Jesus alone is deity, he is God, but he 
fulfills every criteria of being superhuman, of extraordinary power, and the one who saves. Starting in verse 15. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on a cross. Today we are going to look at the one who saves. We're going to look at the fullness of what it means that we have been given salvation through the only one who was able to fulfill that as the fullness of God. We're going to look and see Jesus alone is the one who is the superhero. We're going to do that by looking at five key gifts or, or terms. I like to say these are five aspects of salvation So many times we just look at salvation as, oh, our sins are forgiven. It's so much more than that. And a church cannot be healthy until it sees the fullness of salvation that God has given us through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. So we're going to look at these five terms. They're in the back of your bulletin. And we're going to move through these pretty quick. This is out of my character. We're going to fly through this, okay? It's going to be no pun intended. We're going to be quick here moving through these. We will have these on a screen at the end of these five, so you can jot them down. But it is the fullness of what our hero gives us through his blood shed on the cross. We're going to look at several scriptures to do so. Those are also in the back of your bulletin. The first is, for Jesus to save us means that we receive justification. Justification. In justification, a sinner, which we are all sinners, all mankind are sinners. Jesus alone was the only perfect one without sin. All sinners stand before God and as the accused, because we're sinful. Through Jesus Christ, God declares us righteous. Salvation means that we are the accused. We are guilty of sin. But God, through Jesus Christ, declares us righteous. Righteous. Let's see this in Romans 5, verse 9. Romans 5, verse 9. We have been justified before God, not by anything we've done, by what Christ has done for us, his shed blood, and now we can stand before God as being made righteous through Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 9 says this, Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? God's wrath comes upon the sinful, but we can stand before God And receive what Christ has done for us. And now we can be justified and be declared righteous because of Jesus Christ. That is super awesome. That is what a superhero can do for those who give their life to him. So that's the first, justification. The second thing, the second part of salvation that we receive through Jesus Christ through his shed blood on the cross is redemption. Redemption. Romans 3.23 says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So the second aspect of salvation is that we are redeemed. We receive redemption, which means we stand before God as a slave, a slave to sin, a slave to death, But through Jesus Christ, we are granted freedom because Jesus paid the ransom with his life. Jesus became the ransom, and now we are set free from 
a slavery to sin and a slavery to eternal death, we, re, we have been redeemed. Jesus understood his redemptive work as he said this in Mark 10, 45. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. To give his life as a ransom. We have been redeemed from slavery to freedom through Jesus' shed blood on the cross. That's good news. That is good news. The third is this. This is the one we gravitate most to. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. We receive forgiveness through Jesus being our superhero. Through Jesus dying for us on the cross. Forgiveness is this. The sinner stands before God as a debtor. Which means we have a debt that we cannot pay. We have a debt that is so big that we humanly cannot erase that debt. And so Jesus, dying for us, has erased that debt. He has paid it in full. And not only that, our debt is now forgiven. And it is forgotten. The Apostle Paul reveals this aspect of salvation through Jesus Christ in Ephesians 1.7. Ephesians 1.7 says, In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Now, what I love about this is, yes, our sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ. But not only that, is that God who is perfect, God who is all-knowing, selectively chooses to forget our sins. Jesus pays the debt for us, and then God forgets the debt because of Jesus' blood. That is a superpower. That is amazing. And we see that in Hebrews 8.12. Sorry, in your bulletins it says Romans 8.12. I got a little excited there. It's Hebrews 8.12 that says this, For I will forgive their wickedness, and will remember their sins no more. Jesus alone offers us forgiveness, and our debt has been completely removed before the holy God. The fourth is this, reconciliation. This is where we find our scripture text today. Reconciliation. Colossians 1, 19 through 20. This is what the Apostle Paul reveals. Reconciliation. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus and through Jesus to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. In reconciliation, the sinner, which is all of us, stands before God as an enemy of God, an enemy of God, sin puts us in opposition of God and we are in a position of being an enemy because of sin. And so what happens is Jesus dies on the cross for us so that we can be made right with God. So our relationships, our relationship with God, we are a sinner, He is holy, we are are at war because of sin. And Jesus comes and becomes the peace and takes two opposing parties and brings them in a right relationship because he is the fullness of God. He is the hero and he does what we can't do and we are brought in a right relationship. I love that. That's reconciliation. That's powerful stuff. Let's look at this in Romans 5, 10 through 11. Romans 5, 10 through 11 speaks so powerfully to this, the fourth aspect of salvation. For if, when we were God's enemies, hear that? We were God's enemies. We were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through His life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom 
we have now received reconciliation. Two opposing parties, sinful and holy, brought in a right relationship through peace. And that peace is Jesus through his shed blood on the cross. Praise God for that. That is the gospel. That is good news. And so what happens then is then we live from that day forward that we have accepted Christ, we have repented, we through faith have given our life through baptism and raised to walk in unity with Christ, we now live in the peace. So every relationship should reflect that Jesus is the peace that takes two opposing relationships and unites them to God. That is the power of Jesus Christ. Then the last one. This is, this is all time my favorite. Sonship. The last measure of salvation that our superhero gives us is sonship. Sonship. That means a sinner stands before God as a stranger. And through Jesus, blood on the cross, now we have been moved to the perfect highest level of relationship, which is a firstborn son. From stranger to a firstborn son. A firstborn son is an heir to the fullness of God. So not only are our sins forgiven, not only are we redeemed, not only are we justified and reconciled, but now we've been given the position that only Jesus deserved as the heir to the fullness of God. We've been given that. Through Jesus Christ, he gave us what he deserved. That is the fullness of salvation that moves and changes us to the place that Jesus rightfully deserved. We see this so powerfully in Galatians 4, 4 through 7. Galatians 4, 4 through 7. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Daddy, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. So through Jesus Christ, God's Spirit lives in us, in the Spirit, daily is crying out that relational cry of Daddy, because we have been taken from stranger to Son. And not only that, but we are co-heirs with Christ to the fullness of God. That is a good message. That is a good news. So let me give you a recap of each of these five aspects of salvation. Justification. We stood before God as the accused and He declared us righteous. Redemption. Redemption is this. We stood before God as a slave and He granted us freedom. Forgiveness. We stood before God as a debtor, and he forgot our debt. Those who are reconciled. Reconciliation. We stood before God as an enemy, and he made peace and made us right with God. And then the last is sonship. We stood before God as a stranger, and he called us a son. That's what the church should be teaching. That's what the church is. We are only the church because we are saved. And we are only the church when our identity is Jesus Christ. We're going to start next week by looking at a healthy church is who we are. But we can never get to who we are until we know who he is. And Jesus is the hero. He's the only one that saves. And salvation is the fullness of God that's been poured on to those who are unworthy. And we have been made right at peace and we receive all that Jesus is. That is a beautiful picture of what Jesus has done for us. Because the truth is, a healthy church is all about Jesus. A healthy spiritual life is all about 
Jesus because there is only one that deserves to wear the cape. There is only one that meets the criteria for a superhero, and it is Jesus Christ. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. We too many times lose sight of who the hero is. And we too many times take the cape and we put it on our back, or we take the cape and we put it on someone else's back because we are so desperate to have someone fill our needs to meet our expectations that what we do is we settle for a lesser. We settle for false heroism. We settle for a lesser God because there's only one and it is Jesus Christ. And He alone is what we need. Now, the problem is, is some people will look at that and go, whoo, good, I don't do anything. I can just be a lazy loaf and do nothing. You all are on your own. That's not right. Let me explain this through Mark chapter 2. If you remember this story, there was four friends. And they go and they have a paralyzed friend. And they didn't look at their paralyzed friend and say, good luck, I hope it all works out for you. No, what they did is they took their friend... And they took him to Jesus. They knew who wore the cape. They knew who the hero was. They knew who the healer was. And they took him to Jesus. And when they went to the house where Jesus was teaching, it was full. They couldn't get in. They climbed on the roof. They tore back the roof and lowered their friend down. And Jesus looked at the friends. And because of their faith, he received the paralyzed man. And he received the paralyzed man because those friends did not put the cape on, but they took their friend to the one who wore it. How many times do we rush in to save the day and try to make it about us? I'm telling you, church, I've done it too many times. And every time the branch breaks, every time you try to save somebody and make it about you, the branch breaks. Jesus alone. Those friends knew they knew who the hero was, and it was all about him. Yes, they had a responsibility. Take them to Jesus. Take them to Jesus. Some of you, you've got people in your life. Take them to Jesus. But here's the other part, is when we put that cape on other people, the friend did not go, oh, you four, you are my superheroes. You heal me. No, when he was lowered down, it was by his faith in Jesus Christ he was forgiven and he was healed because he knew who the hero was too many times a church is unhealthy when we look to others to save us we look to others that they can't disappoint us here's our expectations a cape too many times and we lose jesus as the hero and the church begins to die because we make it about each other and not the one that we need to lower each other to it's all about him i'm telling you people we get this mixed up all the time. I do it. We do it. But it's when we look to each other and say, you know what you need? You don't need me to come and save you. You need me to take you to Jesus. That's when the church gets healthy. That's when we lay down our capes. And that's when we stop having expectations for others that only Jesus can fulfill. That's when the church goes out and we start bringing them we start bringing them to Jesus. That's the power of God. That is the fullness in our superhero. Amen? Amen. Please stand. I'm going to pray and we're going to worship. And if you have a decision, come. But I'm telling you right now, we've got to lay these capes down. We've got to stop being what only Jesus fulfilled. He is the Savior and Redeemer. Father God, we come to you right now. Forgive us that we have put expectations on others that only belongs to Jesus. Forgive us that we've tried to be that which only Jesus can fulfill. The church will only be healthy, God, when we allow your son to be the fullness of all that you are, manifested in justification, manifested in reconciliation, in redemption, in forgiveness, in sonship. May that move in us. May that be us. And may we lift each other up in that. Forgive us, God, we've settled for anything else. we settled for anything less then everything we are and everything we do in our homes, at our jobs, in our private time, wherever and in the church, God, that we have settled for something less. God, may it all be Jesus. May it all be Jesus. May it all be Jesus. We love you, God. 
thank you. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.